I was, by any meaningful measurement, the most powerful and influential man on earth, and, for all practical purposes, the universe. There is no them. We are all us. I got elected on that idea. I'd been president for six years now, so it's hardly a surprise that I wasn't mentally prepared for that status to change quite so suddenly. Mr. President, my recommendation is we move immediately to DEF CON 2. This was Admiral Arthur Fitzgerald. As the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, he was the head of the most powerful and influential military on the planet, or, for all practical purposes, the universe. Or, he had been until eight minutes ago. He still didn't even knock before he came in, and he was talking before he reached the Kennedy desk. Half a step behind him was National Security Advisor Lilith McCartney. And I couldn't possibly disagree more. That will certainly be seen as a threat, and I'm not sure we're being threatened. And if we are, we have no way of knowing whether we want to go looking for a fight with a technology capable of pulling this off, Mr. President. We could be bringing a pair of kindergarten scissors to a gunfight. Streaming through the open door was the rest of my senior staff. Claudia Kirkendall, my press secretary, spoke first. CNN has it. MSNBC, Fox, AP, Reuters. It's on every news service. Leonard Price, my chief of staff, said, Mr. President, we're calling in our science advisor, Peter Jobson, and science fiction writer Isaac Ellison. Why are you calling in Isaac? He's probably spent more time thinking about this kind of situation than anyone else on the planet. He was my first choice. We can get others as the need arises. Is it a secure line? Mr. President, I don't believe there is such a thing as a secure line anymore. Not after what we all just saw. Next to Leonard was Lawrence Josephson, Leo's deputy chief of staff. Can someone go over the details? Did everyone see the same thing? Robert Samuels, who was the deputy communications director, was confused. It seems like every device capable of displaying an image played the... What? Images? Recording? NASA has already ruled out any form of video recording. This was not a TikTok video. This was Rob's boss, communication director Keith Schiff. So, what was it? Good evening, good afternoon, or good night, whatever time of dimension that you are in. This is your host, Chris. Welcome to Interstellar Frequency. The video screen popped on, and Jobson and Ellison appeared simultaneously. It's called Quantum Entanglement, Mr. President. It's so fucking cool. This was Ellison. Oh, sorry, Mr. President. He looked back to the cell phone in his hand. Professor Jobson, can you explain what this quantum entanglement is? If you have two hours and you pay close attention, I can probably teach you to spell it. 
Richard Feynman said that anyone who thinks they understand quantum entanglement doesn't understand quantum entanglement. The idea, in its most basic and wildly oversimplified form, is that two identical particles can exist in two different places at the same time. These particles can be an inch apart or billions of light years distant. But the particles are exact opposites of each other. And I don't think anyone in this room has a clue what that means. It means that some unbelievably advanced species managed to transmit information from God only knows where to every device on Earth simultaneously. Quantum entanglement can't transport matter, but it absolutely can transport information instantly between any two points in the universe. We've done it ourselves. But, there's just no way, none, that we could pull off something on this scale. And, what's really intense is that they sent us math, which is the universal language. Right? Math? I frowned. I just saw a series of numbers repeating. Yes, Mr. President. 1, 8, 27, 64, 125, 216. Over and over again for exactly 42 seconds. Rob looked disgusted at the confused faces displayed by everyone in the room. They're the first six perfect cubes? A few mouths dropped open while eyes shot upward and to the right. They were calculating. Isn't that absolutely terrific? These bastards sent the most meaningful message they could, and they did it in 42 seconds. Ten bucks says they read Douglas Adams. All right, are we absolutely certain that these came from an extraterrestrial intelligence? Jobson spoke while the others pondered. Mr. President, I'm the biggest skeptic on the planet. James Randi was a distant second to me. One of our greatest scientists told us that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Alien contact is among the most extraordinary claims anyone could ever make. The thing is, sir, I can't imagine any evidence more extraordinary than this. I'm convinced that they're not only from off-world, but that they are three-dimensional. They have length, width, and height. If this were Star Trek, I'd be looking for Borg cubes. But I don't discuss Star Trek in polite company anymore. They changed a few lines, Isaac. They massacred my script, Peter. Normally, I would want to have many more experts involved. I would want an intelligent and well-informed debate for at least a week before I made any choices. This is really a discussion best suited for the UN. Honestly, Mr. President, I don't think we have that kind of time. If we don't prepare our defenses immediately, and I mean you give me the go order in the next 60 seconds, we may be unable to do it afterward. We have communication now, but two minutes from now. This isn't War of the World's Admiral. They would have flattened Manhattan by now. I don't know what they're doing, Lilith. Do you? Fitzgerald looked at each person in the room, individually. Do any of you want to tell me who these folks are? What do they want? These dudes are from a galaxy far, far away. They're saying hello. They're letting us know they exist. They're the new neighbors who just moved in next door. Except, you know, we don't have a clue where next door is. Is there a way for us to send a reply to our new neighbors? Of course, Mr. President. Text them back. Several billion of us almost certainly already have. It's been 10 minutes and 13 seconds since it happened. Do you really believe no one has sent a text in the last 10 minutes? And you think these aliens can read them? Quantum entanglement is all about opposites. If they can send, they must be able to receive. They're certainly watching all our broadcasts of any kind. They're reading what anyone sitting at a computer is typing. They're reading our texts. They absolutely have to be. And that means they know our military is not on high alert yet. Mr. President, I need that go order. Until 10 minutes ago, Admiral, I was the most powerful and influential man in the universe. Now, I'm just a player on a galactic stage. I think I can be allowed a minute to think. Mr. President. And whether you agree or not, I'm going to take it. You still take your orders from me, and you would do well to keep that in mind. Mr. President, it's going to get worse before it gets better. What makes you so sure, Lilith? And that was when, of 
force. Obviously. The power went out. Everywhere. Okay, sir. Don't move, Mr. President. You need to get some flashlights. Stay wherever you are. been a long minute since I've done a sci-fi on this show and you know uh, we had a collaboration Fred contacted me he's like hey you know I got this and I kind of need your help with uh, some shutting off the power I was like wait what <laughs> wait I could do that <laughs> and uh, oh my god so I said yeah Send it over. Let's do this. Let's see what I, what kind of accomplishment I can add to the story here. And, oh my god. Oh my god. I've, um... I scared the crap out of myself, man. I've, uh... I never... I've never created anything in a way so surreal and so strong that I actually had a couple other scenes that I was going to create... And they were stronger than what the last one of the warehouse was. And I was like, yeah, no, no, no. We're, we're, we're just, we're going to stop right here. And I've never created art in a way that was so powerful and so strong as that was that the next segments that I was going to implement were going to be just as strong. 
if not ten times stronger because it was a build up and it kept going bigger and bigger and bigger that I literally had to say, Okay, yeah, no, I'm done. I can't I can't I can't do that. I, I just I refused to do that. It was just way too strong in the message. And so that was like, yeah, we, we got it. This is it. Right here, this spot, we're, we're done. And I've got uh, more sound design to be doing in the next two other episodes behind this. So you guys are getting a, a sci-fi storyline here. And I love it. I love it. I mean, if, if nothing else, man, uh, I recommend that you turn around and go back and re-listen if it was like, wait, what? Because the story moves so fast and so quickly, you're going to miss it if you're not paying attention. And so, yeah, it's really damn good. And I'm proud of that. So awesome. I mean, really, this is kind of the reason why I started doing this show to begin with was to do stuff like this was the whole reason why I started this podcast and the reason why I, I mean, whatever the hell kind of podcast this is, but this was the reason why I started doing my show was because of what we did. And I want to do more of that. You know, the only problem is I'm not quite good enough to be able to do that every week because it is exhausting to create something like that. It, it's like, it takes a lot of time and energy to, to really work that in a way where it comes out the way it does. And when it does, it's like, wow, that is awesome. And I gotta, I gotta thank you, Fred, and I gotta thank you, Jenner, man. It, it, it's like, without you guys, man, I wouldn't be able to do this. I wouldn't have the opportunity to do this type of work. And I like this kind of work. And welcome it, you know? And someday, if I continue to keep growing the way I'm growing, I could start doing this on video motion and, and you know, Final Cut and put it out there on YouTube as well and do my own design and my own footage and then create my own stuff through motion. God, I look forward to that day where I could take an episode like this and just you know slam it through motion and, and create it in a way of a visual effects along with the sound effects and then just put it all together and create this you know piece of work that is just awesome but I guess that's why it, you know it takes 50 billion people on a, a movie to create a movie or a TV show or something to add every bit of piece to it is what everybody coming together and making it work just is like yeah man that's awesome and so, yeah, I, if you guys, um, you know, are curious about it and you're not sure what's what, you can always go back and listen to USI. You can always go back and listen to Free Day so you can understand where we went from to where we are now and then uh, how we're going on this. And I've got two other episodes that I'm working on with the sound design putting it together and, and making it you know bigger than this one <laughs> and it's it's a lot of fun I like doing that and so I recommend it you guys go check out you know Fred's Front Porch Podcast I recommend it it's really awesome so again you're gonna hear the next episode next week and you'll get a little bit more of the uh, sound design from me on that one. So, until next time.
This is interstellar frequency. End of transmission. Stand up, stargazer.